Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to share tips, builds, and guide on Savior, the Defiler of Light. Savior is a mage that focuses on long-range attacks and can immobilize multiple enemies. He was once a valued follower of the church, but after discovering the real intent, he decided to leave the organization and join these two troublesome kids. Now, see you around! His first skill fires a mystic bullet that increases its flying distance each time it hits an enemy. It can extend up to 5 times. His second skill summons a barrier for 5 seconds. Enemies passing through will be slowed, while allies will get movement speed. When the barrier is hit with his first skill, it will expand for 3 seconds, which can immobilize enemies. His ultimate fires a beam that can hit enemies in a straight line, similar to Leila's, but the difference is that it can cover the whole map. His passive enhances his other skills when hitting an enemy hero. At first stage, his skill damage is increased to 120%. Second stage will improve the width of his skills. Third stage will reduce the cooldown of his skills. After reaching third stage, he will enter transcendent state, where all his skills are enhanced for 5 seconds. The duration can be extended for 1 second each time his skill hits an enemy. There are two builds you can use with Savior. First one is the Clock of Destiny and Lightning Truncheon build. It gives you kill stealing powers because of its burst damage. Second one is the Enchanted Talisman and Ice Queen 1 build. This is more like a support build since it focuses on slow and cooldown reduction. You can use the Talent Mystery Shop if you're going for the first build. Use Simply Reach on the second build since you will be spamming your skills. Use Flicker for escaping those dangerous spots. Savior doesn't have any dash skills, so he's going to be an easy target for assassins. If you can play safely, you can probably use Flame Shot for kill stealing. Savior's combo is a bit tricky, and this is where you need to focus if you want to be good at him. So you've learned the basic combo earlier, where you place the second skill and then hit with his first skill to expand the barrier. You can also do a 1-2 combo if your hands are fast enough. Release his first skill and then quickly plant his second skill for that instant immobilize effect. I think this is the most efficient way since it requires less time and the enemies will be immobilized instantly. When the enemy sees a barrier placed, their normal reaction will be to move away. But if you do the 1-2 combo, they'll have no time to react. His ultimate can also be used to expand the barrier. Place his second skill and then use ultimate. Or you can do it in reverse. Ultimate first and then second skill. Remember, expanding the barrier deals another damage to the enemy. That's why you should always aim to activate it. A full combo will be like this. I think the number one tip is to fully understand how transcendence works. Knowing the ins and outs will greatly improve your savior gameplay. So to activate transcendence, your skill has to hit an enemy hero three times. If your skill hits multiple heroes, each hero hit will count as one stack. If you hit three, you get full stacks immediately. Once you have three stacks, your next skill will make you enter transcendence regardless if you hit an enemy or not. After casting a skill, a 5 second timer will start which is the duration of your transcendence. You can extend it by 1 second each time your skill hits an enemy hero. During transcendence, the cooldown of all of your skills are reduced. And because of that, you can continuously use his skill like this. Struggle is meaningless. You can use the Lord and Turtle to collect stacks. This way, you can charge up before entering a team fight. You can hold it because the timer will only start on your next skill. Jungle and minions do not give stacks. 
a simple one to combo is enough to collect these stacks. Use the minions to reach the enemy at the back with your first How skill because it can extend its reach up to 5 times. Using his ultimate will instantly give you 3 stacks. His ultimate is quite powerful so I think using fleeting time is a must regardless of what build you use. Always pay attention to the minimap for those low HP targets. Cooldown build is recommended because his transcendent state already removes a big part of his cooldown. You can perform double ultimate as well as double immobilize with that build. Clear minions with his first skill and reserve his second for team fights. His second skill has a pretty long cooldown and it doesn't do much damage anyway. His first skill can be used to detect the bush as long as it hits the enemy. Saver can be easily countered by high mobility heroes like assassins such as Fanny, Ling, and Lancelot. He has no escape skill, making him an easy target. Always maintain your distance and stick with your tank for protection. You can counter Nana's passive once it's activated, knowing she has little HP left. Saver's power lies in his range and CC effect. He's good in team fights but fares poorly on one on one scenarios. He can easily deal a ton of damage from a distance with a full stack ultimate. This means he can reach those squishy marksmen hiding in the back line. I think I'm going to like Saver's game style. Honestly, I prefer the cooldown build despite the low damage. Being able to spam his skills lessens his downtime. And you can make up for the lost damage by entering Transcendent State. With the cooldown build, you become a utility mage with a combination of slow and immobilize effect. Initiate retreat! Crumble into dust! What can you say about Saver? Is he good, weak, or balanced? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. That's all for this video. Stay safe and thank you for watching.